This video is brought to you by Greater Commons. Greater learning, greater opportunities, greater life. Visit us at greatercommons.com. We're going to take a look at uh, programming, like why is the web relevant? Why is Go, the Go programming language, relevant to the web? We're going to see how to do a really basic web app using Go and routing and everything like that. And later in class, we're going to see the language fundamentals and then also revisit what we look at here right in this kind of preview lecture because you asked me how does go relate to doing web stuff so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you I want to give you a couple of resources first and so you could get to this document at this URL so if you want to take your phone out and snap a picture of that that's a good thing to do right now and uh, if you're online just pause this video right here and we'll restart it in a second all right, next thing I want to give you is I want to give you access to my two trainings. And I don't know if I pointed this out to you last week, but I have some courses on Udemy. And if you go to Udemy, Todd McLeod, and there's the URL. So you could go there, just search for that, and then come here. And uh, I have a Learn How to Code, Google's Golang Programming Language. And I also have... Web development with Google's Go language. This just launched last night. Okay. And the price on it says $65 and $35. But Udemy is always selling courses. Like right now, they're selling them for $15. Sometimes they're selling them for $10. And uh, here are coupon codes for you to uh, get in for four. I think this one gets you in for $10. Go time for the Go language training. So. You have a link to this document. You'll be able to click that link. For $10, you get into the Go language training. And uh, and then for, well, that one doesn't show the coupon code. Let me copy it. Copy link URL. And, uh, and for the web dev training, if you go to this one, OB1 Kenobi. You know that guy? That's an O, not a zero. B1 KBE. And so that'll get you into the, this course for $14 for the web dev course. And so those two courses for you, when you're learning this, right, if you want to learn it, you got to pay the dues if you want to sing the blues. How's the rest of that song go? And you know it don't come easy, right? It's a devotion. It's a devotion. You got to devote yourself to it. And so if you put in the time, you'll, you'll master the craft like anything, shooting hoops or playing the piano. You put in the time you'll master the craft. And little by little, drop by drop, I had a teacher used to say, drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. You keep adding those drops, and after three months, you'll be like, man, I've been adding drops this bucket for three months, and there's like hardly any water in the bottom of that bucket. And you'll feel a little discouraged. You're like, you kidding me? Two hours a day for three months, and that's all I got in the bucket? But do it for two or three years? You'll be like, step back, let me fix it. <laughs> and you'll be like, look at how much water's in that bucket. Drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. You, you can't play the guitar well unless you do it for years. And same with anything, same with programming. I had another teacher, very chill dude. Goenka was his name. He'd say, persistently, patiently, you're bound to succeed. Just very chill like that. Persistently, patiently, you're bound to succeed. But you got to make it a devotion. You devote yourself to it. Every day you work on it. All right, so that's my little inspirational talk. What are you going to be working on? You're going to become a master of creating websites and doing server-side programming and using the Go programming language. And it's a great language to learn really highly in demand. So I'm going to create a new folder for our class. Zero, I'm going to call it 46. And it's just here in 46 uh, SP17, Spring 17. Okay, And so it's just here in this repo on GitHub. Goes to 11. Golang web, uh, goes to 11 is my GitHub username. Golang web dev is the repo. And you'll be able to go into 00 temp, and you'll scroll down. There'll be 46, right, for, uh, for our class, 46 SP17. And I could push that up by launching the terminal and then doing a git 
status shows me, hey, some stuff has changed. I don't have anything in that folder. I actually have to add something in that folder. So I'm going to do a, a directory 01. And, uh, and then inside here, I'll do a new main go file. And then inside here, I'm going to just code a little bit of uh, a little web server. HTTP listen and serve. And we're going to learn what all this is and how it works. But it's going to listen for requests and serve responses. Last week we talked about what the web is and what it does and the client server architecture. And uh, servers, you know, client servers, like in a restaurant. Client asks for something, server goes and gets it and sends it back. So client makes a request and the server uh, serves a response, writes a response back. So it's listening, the server's listening, and it's serving a response. So HTTP listen and serve. HTTP is a package, and we're going to listen and serve on something called port 8080. Okay, And uh, we're going to use the default serve mux, and you'll learn what that means a little bit further into the course. And this is the package. So we have different packages of code that we can use. It's pre-written for us. This is the HTTP package. We can see all of the packages by going to golang.org and going to Documents, where you find the documents for the Go language. And in the documents, we have Effective Go, great document, but this is like high-end engineering stuff. So I talked to you about this last week. Don't try to learn, the, learn how to do stuff from Effective Go, but great place to consult and the language specification, but then we also have package documentation, different packages like the HTTP package. And if we scroll down, we see, hey, there is the HTTP package somewhere in here. I don't see it. HTTP, HTTP, there's the HTTP package. It's under the net package, networks, right? Doing HTTP on a network. And so that's a package. And I could click on that and I could read this pre-written code that I could use, written by some of the best programmers in the world. Right? Cool, solid, robust, performant, ready, ready to go. They figured everything out. This is golang.org. Right? Golang.org. There is also godoc.org. So golang.org has standard documentation. The standard documentation, the standard library. The standard library's documentation. Godoc.org has documentation of the standard library and third-party packages. Third-party packages being any Joe Blow or Jane Blow who decided they wanted to write some code and make a package out of it can have their stuff here. And that's really helpful because if you need to use something, it's like, ah, I need a UUID, you can look in here and you can find a UUID that's already been created, right? And you can say, cool. And you can look through that code and say, looks good, I'm gonna use it. You don't have to spend all the time writing it. But you could also find in here you could also find in here uh, the standard library packages. So I'm just going to do net HTTP. So there's package net HTTP. And often you could just drop the package down here. And you learn what the packages are that you use frequently. And you could just drop the URL in. I want the net HTTP package. And then here's the standard documentation for the net HTTP package. We could go to index. And I could uh, scroll down and I could look for listen and serve. And there's listen and serve. And then I could read about it and how to use it. It takes a string, which I gave the port. And it also takes something called a handler. We'll learn what a handler is. All right, but this is a little demo just to show you what you could do. So I, I'm going to create a server. And then I'm going to create something that handle funk. And, uh, and I'm going to say anything that comes into the default route of my my website. <coughs> That's not the one I wanted. There we go. Get rid of that. Anything that comes into the default, default route of my website, I'm going to serve it up by index. So I create a func and I call it index and it has to have a writer and a, a re, a, uh, something to uh, re listen for a response. Let's try and find the right word, right? And so it has a HTTP response writer, and then it also has uh, a request coming in. There, that's the right way to say it, right? And so those are the two parameters which are required for a function to be able to be used by handle func. And this is just, these are just the rules. It's like a recipe. If you want to make chocolate chip cookies, 
you can't use the butter chip, butterscotch ch chips, because that's not going to be chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> They're rules, right? Same here. So if you want to use handle funk, well, you got to use this, this way, and we'll learn what those rules are. But now I've got this function, and I could say io.writestring, io for input output, and I could pass in my writer, and I could say hello from index. Sweet. And then I could go to my terminal, and I could go into 46, 0, 1, change into, change into, change into temp first, and then uh, 46, and then 0, 1. And I could go go run main.go and run this program. Cool. That's it. Totally different from the HTML. Yeah, like the more index files. So, what else can you do with this? Uh, maybe I want to have a couple of routes. And by the way, instead of go run main.go, I could say go build. And it'll build all that down into binary. I now have a binary executable that will run on a Mac. So I could run that on a Mac. Hello from index. Hello from about. And hello from contact. Not too bad, right? It's like, oh shoot, man, just gotta remember a few little lines and I'm like standing up a web server and I've got binary, you know, so I could deploy that binary. And if I wanted to deploy that binary instead of on a Mac to a Linux machine, I could do go OS is equal to Linux. My operating system will be Linux and the go uh, architecture of that will be AMD 64, go build. And I could give this uh, a name And I've just built a binary on my Mac for a Linux machine with an architecture of AMD 64. And I could then just deploy that onto a Linux machine. And that's my, web, my entire web application, the server and everything. Pretty sweet. And then right in here, you know, I'm just sending a string back. And so I can make that string an HTML file. H1 with an anchor. And in that anchor, I'm going to have an href equals pound. And I want three of those. And uh, I want the content to be nothing. And so this will be uh, home, this will be about, this will be contact, and this one will be default, and this one will be about, and this one will be contact, and we'll put these, that didn't turn out the way I wanted though. I messed up my Emmet. making sure that all looks right. I don't know why this gives me cannot resolve file about. That's fine. Oh, you know what it's not liking? I need backticks. Backticks are also how you could do a string 
and it escapes, it allows, it's a raw string literal is the way you say it, and uh, it allows raw strings, and so quotes and everything can be in there. And so this one is, uh, this one, whoops, I'm no longer in HTML. This one is now, this one is contact, and this one is about, and this one is home, and go run main.go. Contact didn't happen for some reason. Uh, you put it in the wrong spot. I didn't close it. Oh, cool, man. Put in the HTML. Let's go to lunch. Back end's done. What are you guys doing? Anybody have any questions? How many people like that? Yeah? You like that? That's, you know, not too bad. This text under program here, is this just something that comes on old Macs? This is WebStorm. So for editors, uh, there's a company, JetBrains, and you can do JetBrains Student and free for students. And you just come in here and you do your little thing. And I'm using a WebStorm, which has a Go plugin. They also have a new uh, uh, editor just for the Go programming language. So you can search JetBrains Go Lang, and it'll take you to Gogland. I like Goland better. I don't know what Gogland means. But here's Goglan, and you could say uh, uh, Goglan plugin for more, the FAQ official website. And then in here, get an early build. You could get, and so I'm using a JetBrains product and Web, uh, WebStorm, and this should be even more tailored for Go. So check that one out. Uh, also good is VS Code and Golang. Uh, and also good is Atom.io and go lane. And so all of them will have code completion and things like that. You just pick your flavor, whatever you're used to. My uh, Sublime 3 is also fine with go lane. So different text editors. All right, good? Cool. <laughs> Any other questions?